have you ever argued with your partner and thought to yourself, he's just not getting what I'm saying? Guess what? In that moment, your partner may be thinking the exact same thing about you. All too often, we enter into a conversation hoping to resolve certain issues, but we end up saying certain things or responding in ways that only makes matters much worse. Hi, I'm Angela from Girl Garden. Today, we'll be exploring some simple but powerful tips to help you improve your communication with your partner. When we think of communication, we tend to think of the actual act of conveying a message. But the truth is, great communication actually starts with your intention, your timing, and your mindset. So, we'll be covering this topic in two parts. First, how do you set yourself up for great communication? And second, how do you actually communicate with your partner? The main ideas in this video come from several books such as Nonviolent Communication and Difficult Conversations. I'll be focusing more on the practical tips that I took away after many attempts to apply these insights in my relationships. You can find the links for the books and book summaries below in the description. Remember to subscribe for more tips on life and relationships. And with that, let's dive right in. First, create a safe space. Have you ever tried talking to your partner while you're walking down a noisy street or in a room full of running kids? I guess it didn't go very well, did it? Noise, distractions and stress can change the mood and flow of a conversation. Imagine you're pouring your heart out and your partner says, Huh? I can't hear what you're saying. Or he totally mishears or misunderstands you. Chances are you feel really upset and your conversation just goes downhill from there. That's why it's so important to create a safe, distraction-free environment. Both you and your partner should be able to talk openly, vulnerably, and without interruptions. This helps both of you to be present and to be able to give and receive more mindfully. You can dedicate a regular time to do this or just pick a suitable time and place. For example, try lighting some candles in the room or talking to your partner over a glass of wine or choose a quiet corner in the park next to a running stream. In short, choose the suitable time and place for your conversations. With the right setting, you and your partner can properly digest and understand what's being said. Number two, set your intentions. It helps to set clear intentions and boundaries on what you're going to be talking about. If you keep jumping from one thing to another, you're going to have a very disorganized and confusing discussion. First, establish a clear topic and stick to it. For example, can we talk about what happened at dinner earlier? I know that there are several things that we need to talk about, but right now, I specifically like to discuss what happened over dinner. Besides specifying the topic, it helps to lay out your shared purpose, values and priorities. For example, we both want to move toward a more loving and supportive relationship, which is why it's so important for me to talk to you about what happened over dinner just now. You may even want to set some ground rules, such as not bringing up old hurts or conflicts, as these tend to cloud the conversation. I'm guilty of that sometimes, which is why I now establish the rule up front and even write it down as a reminder to myself. This is much more effective than asking your partner to remind you, because in the heat of the moment, Chances are, whatever your partner say is likely to add fuel to fire. But if it's your own words, you're likely to listen to it, right? Tip number three, enter with compassion and empathy. Communication often goes wrong when we lack compassion or empathy. Just think about how you feel if someone blames you for a problem or if they tell you how selfish or lazy you are without even trying to understand what you're going through. You might feel offended, hurt or defensive and you're much less likely to listen to whatever they have to say. The same applies in reverse. Without empathy, we are likely to communicate with the goal to prove ourselves right. So, we are more likely to say things like, You are so selfish, you only think about yourself. Look, I know so much more than you about this. Hey, it's not my fault, no one told me about this. Or, if you insist on doing this, I'm going to leave. In response to such statements, your partner is likely to just tune out or push back. And you're likely to end up with an argument, not a conversation. Which is why the previous tip is so important. First, get clear on your goals and intent of the conversation. Are you really out to prove a point and win the argument? Or do you really want to deepen and improve your relationship? I love Marshall Rosenberg's FVC model. It uses four components to help you express yourself and to receive your partner's needs and feelings. If you want to learn more about it, head over to Reading Graphics. The link is below. And do check out part two of this video for more communication tips. Ultimately, Great communication helps both of you to walk away with a deeper understanding of each other and that's only possible with active listening. Which brings us to the next tip. Tip number four, it's not your story versus theirs. Most of the time, we enter a conversation with certain assumptions that block our ability to truly listen. Start by acknowledging that you may not have all the facts and information and be curious about what you may have missed. The truth is probably something that includes both your story and theirs. For example, Imagine if your partner didn't show up for your anniversary date after an hour and didn't even pick up your call. You're furiously thinking, he doesn't take you seriously and doesn't value your relationship. 
Now, from his perspective, an important client showed up at the last minute threatening to cancel a botched project. He was so stressed trying to pacify the client that he totally lost track of time. And then, you stomped into the office and deliberately embarrassed him in front of his client. So, he is furious that you are being inconsiderate. Can you see how both sides of the stories can be valid and yet hold flawed assumptions? It is only when you genuinely listen to the other person that you can understand where they are really coming from. So, enter every conversation with the mindset they are each sharing pieces of the puzzle that will contribute to a bigger picture. This way of thinking helps you to set aside preconceived notions and to be fully present to what your partner is communicating. So as you can see, great communication starts before the conversation even begins. You can set up the conversation more effectively by choosing a safe space for the conversation, going in with clear intention, approaching with empathy, and being open to each other's truths. Aside from Marshall Rosenberg's non-violent communication, here are some books that you might find useful. Subscribe below and watch our next video where we share the do's and don'ts when you have your actual conversation. Share this video with your partner and let me know which of these tips you found the most useful.